Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, we're going to continue our series uh, this morning, Connecting the Dots. It's based on a book that I've got coming out this Tuesday, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, this book, it's been about two years in the making, so um, it's kind of like kind of like giving birth to a baby. You just never know how things are going to go, right? So, um, right? Like, all, yeah, I, I know a lot about giving birth. <laughs> just kidding, kidding. I watched my wife give birth, but... Uh, so I want to tell a story this morning, but before I do, something really cool is happening this morning. Some of my lifelong mentors, when I was 15, you guys, believe it or not, I was pretty obnoxious when I was 15. <laughs> I'm not anymore. I'm mature now. But when I was 15, I was a punk, okay? And I met this couple, and they were not phased at all by my punkness. David and Karen Nicholson, they, they took me on. They started discipling me when I was in my teens. You know, there's a s- statistic that says that the number one, kind of one of the number one predictors that a kid's going to stay in the church and keep following Christ is if the, the kid has a mentor who's not their parents before they turn 15 who engages them with the Bible and engages them with the church. And those people for me were David and Karen Nicholson. And they are here this morning all the way from Jacksonville, Florida. Yes. Stand up. You got to stand up. David hates it when I make him stand up. And yeah, there they are. Yes. So yeah, some of my, like, I mean, just next to my parents, they are my other parents. And uh, in fact, when you read Connecting the Dots, because I'm assuming you're all going to read the book, uh, they are kind of the, the story I about tell about that crazy experience in Mexico. They're the ones responsible for that. So uh, you'll also hear about Karen, who reads my books. I'll send her any book I write. I, she's the first one to read it, and she's the weirdest person in the world. She reads the books from back to front. Like, she reads the last chapter, then the second to last. It's, I don't know. She's just kind of a freak that way. But, uh. <laughs> but I got I to tell you this story this morning. So when I had, I went and just asked Emily's dad permission to marry her. I'm old school like that, right? And I, I went and asked permission to marry her, and he said, okay, we're good to go. You can marry her. And that night, I got a call from Karen. They were living in Mexico at the time, so she called me from Mexico. And she said, hey, Joel, I was just washing the dishes. I felt like I was supposed to call you and tell you the timing is wrong on something you're about to do. And I was like, what? I was like, Karen, I'm, I'm about to propose to Emily. And she's like, I don't know if that's it. And I'm like, well, I need more information. What did the Lord tell you? She's like, I don't know. You just got to seek the Lord. That's actually kind of the sum of most of David and Karen's advice to me throughout my life is just seek the Lord, man. So I was like, well, Karen, you, you can't just call up here and drop this bomb. I need more information. She's like, I don't know. Pray about it. I'm like, All right. The next morning, another mentor of mine calls and says, hey, Joel, what you got going on? I was like, well, you know, I just asked permission to marry Emily. He goes, I don't know if the timing's right on that. It's like, really? So I got, I got, the, I got the hint. I prayed about it, and, uh, you know, I got a lot of criticism. People were like, oh, you're just afraid of commitment. And it was at one whole year between the time those people called me and kind of held me back from proposing and when we actually got married. But, and, and during that year, some crazy stuff happened that I look back now and I say, if, if we wouldn't have held off, it would have started our marriage off on some really rough footing. But we were able to push through that that year. We both grew in a lot of ways, and uh, she finally got a little more mature, and she was ready to get married. <laughs> but I'm just kidding. That's not what went down. But anyway, it was all about me, actually, because I really had some issues. But I, you guys not get enough from the peanut gallery. Come on. All right. But I, I thank the Lord so much that he, he put those people in my life that spoke to me. Because, you know, have you ever noticed life is kind of complicated sometimes? Like, all the time? You go, uh, why isn't it just more clear? And the older you get, it seems like the less clear things are. Like, everything was super clear when you were 18 and didn't know anything. (laughs) But as you learn more things, you're like, gosh, it's just not as black and white as I want it to be. There's some stuff that's black and white, no no doubt, right? There's some commandments the Lord has given us are black and white. But there's other stuff you're like sure what to do in this situation. In fact, I know this about everybody in this room. If we were to talk for a few minutes, you've got something going on in your life right now, and you would say this, 
I just need direction on what to do about this. My son, I like, I did not raise him to be this way. I don't know why he's doing this. I need some guidance from God on how to deal with this situation. My daughter, she has gone off the rails. Like, I need some guidance here on how to deal with her. Maybe your spouse, you're like, I'm trying everything to restore the trust in this relationship, and it's not happening. And I just need to know what to do. Like, God, you're calling out to God. Tell me what to do. Some of you have got issues at work, and you're just like, man, I can't take this anymore. If I, my, you're already dreading going to work tomorrow. You go, man, if we keep doing this, I'm just, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to want to kill myself. Like, I don't know how to deal with my boss. You're like, Lord, show me what to do about this boss. Some of you, it's in, in your finances. You just, you, every time you think you're getting ahead, you're like, man, we're being so frugal and safe. And then all of a sudden the transmission blows up and you're like, I just, am, what am I missing? Is there something I'm doing wrong, God? We all want some direction and some guidance from God. So we, we're talking about this book, Connecting the Dots, and the basic premise of the book is that God is always at work in your life, but most of the time, you don't see it or understand it. And I talked last week about how God's work in our life follows a pretty consistent pattern. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me in paths of righteousness. That Hebrew word path, my goal, it literally means paths made of circles. So one of the charts I have in the book is this idea that every, every season of life, kind of has this really consistent pattern. And what typically happens is it starts with a turning point. Something changes in your life. Uh, it can be marriage. It can be something you expected. It can be something you didn't expect. It can be something you expected, but it's completely different than you thought. Having kids comes to mind. Like, I did not expect it to be this freaking hard, but it's hard. They never stop. They just keep going, and they're up every morning. And it's like, gosh, ugh. So there's this turning point. And then we talked last week about the courage that's required to, to step out. And this week I want to talk about the fact that in every heroic story that we love, a guide shows up. If you think about Luke Skywalker minding his own business and he meets Obi-Wan Kenobi. And Obi-Wan Kenobi shows him the ways of the Force. In The Matrix, Neo meets Morpheus. Do you want to take the blue pill or the red pill? And he, he gets into the matrix, and there's always a guide that shows up. And, and as Christians, I believe that the reason this idea of a guide showing up is so powerful is because as Christians, uh, God shows up as our guide in our life. But there's a very specific part of God who shows up to be our guide. In fact, right before Jesus left the earth, he said this. He said, guys, I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear. My, my Jack Nicholson translation, he says, you can't handle the truth right now. It's too big. I got way more to do. And if you think about it, Jesus, man, some of the stuff he taught, we're still trying to figure out what he was saying because it's so powerful. The truth is so big and deep and powerful. It'll set you free, but man, it's so big and it can be uncomfortable. You know, truth being revealed is kind of like a light. And when you turn on the light, if it's been dark, you turn on the light, you're like, ugh. Whoa, man, like, I can't quite make out what's going on out there. The truth is big and powerful. So Jesus says, I showed up as this light, and I'm telling you more truth right now than you can even handle. But here's the good news. I got to go. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. This is right before Jesus left the earth. He said, guys, you're going to freak out because I'm going to leave. And you're going to think, oh, no, has the light gone? The light hasn't gone. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, and he's going to be there to guide you. And it says, he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He says, you, he says he actually, at one point, he says, you, you guys need to be glad that I'm leaving. Because if I didn't leave, the Holy Spirit wouldn't come. And he says, the Holy Spirit is going to be your guide through all of the complexities of your relationships, all of the complexities of your finances, all the complexities of dealing with how to relate to, like, just everything in the world around you, the Holy Spirit will be the direct spokesman to your heart of what God wants for you. And the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. It's a, one of these complex things called the Trinity. You've probably heard of the Trinity. It's like, how do you explain what it is? My daughter the other day, she's like, she, she got, she's like, Dad, I got so mad at a kid at school the other day because he said, God isn't Jesus, but Jesus is God. And I'm like, 
wow, that's like way above my theological pay grade. I'm like, <laughs> she's like, so is it true? It's like, well, yes and no. And she's like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, it's like this and that. And afterwards she goes, oh, so God is a family. Oh, it's pretty profound. Yeah, God is a family. It's like one family, but there's three parts to the family. And I was like, wow, that's pretty good. I'm 45. I'm just figuring this out. But she's got it solved at seven. So that's what the, the, this, this is one element of God, and he shows up to guide us in truth. And, and the longer I live, the more I'm, I'm convinced of this. You cannot make it in this world without direct guidance and revelation from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because there's just too much complexity. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I usually want a formula. Like, I read a ton of books looking for the formula. That's why we buy books a lot of times. We're like, okay, what's the formula to success? And you read it, and then you try and implement it in your life, and you go, that didn't work quite the same way for me as it did for him. You ever had that? I mean, I can't tell you how many books I've read. Or you start to implement it, and you're like, I just can't keep doing this. I can't keep this diet. This is insane. Insane people have this kind of diet. And I'm convinced that what we're looking for most of the time is a formula. We just want to know what boxes do I need to check for things to be good. That's what religion is. Religion is, you know, do this, do that, do that. God will be pleased with you. Everything's clear. You'll go to heaven. But, you know, we as Christians, we ha we do we're beyond religion. Like, you, we needed religion before Jesus, but when Jesus came along, he said, now what you need is you need a direct relationship with me where we're talking and hanging out, and I'm guiding you in all truth. So th this is a really key point here. There is no formula for life. There is only revelation from the Holy Spirit. And you go, well, I don't know. That's a little simplistic, Joel. This, don't get me wrong. There's some stuff that if you do it, principles, if you do this, you'll get that. Okay? If you want to call that a formula, you can. But what we're looking for is a turnkey way to solve every situation in our life. But the problem is, every one of us is different. You're unique. Your story is different. My story is different than yours. So I could sit up here and I could say, and that's why I really try when I get up here to preach, teach principles. It's like, if you apply this to your life, it'll work out no matter what your circumstance is. That's the beauty of the Bible. Jesus taught so many principles. He, he didn't say, hey, everybody has to give $100 a week at church. No, he said a principle. He said, hey, if you give, it'll come back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, pouring over. Like the amount you give, that's the amount will be given to you. So you get to decide how much you want given back to you. And again, it's not like God's a slot machine, but he's saying this is what I've set up in the world. If you're generous and open-handed with others, they'll be generous and open-handed with you. And if you're not, they won't be either. So it's a principle. So you get to decide how much you want to tap into the power of what he shared. It's not a formula. But there, it's a principle. And the way that we get to understand better how those principles work is, I believe, through revelation from the Holy Spirit. And what we need him to reveal to us ultimately is truth. And the challenge with truth is truth is really tricky sometimes. Have you noticed that? What is, especially in these days where it's just like, well, that's not true. Fact checker is telling you that's not true. And then other fact checker is telling you it is true. Well, which one is true? Here's a weird thought. What if both are maybe a little true? But that's the key, a little true. There's a, there's a verse where Paul says this. He says, right now we see through a glass dimly or darkly. He says, it's like we have these glasses on that are kind of dirty and they're kind of shaded and we can't really see everything clearly. He says, but one day those glasses will be taken off and we'll see clearly. And when we stand before the Lord, we'll see everything clearly. But he says, right now we're limited. And we've got these glasses on. So really, the challenge we face right now is truth. I think if we knew the wholeness of truth, it would crush us. One of the things they teach you in counseling is it's usually pretty easy to figure out early on what a person's challenges are in the first few sessions. The challenge is, as a counselor, how to reveal truth in the levels they can handle it. And we live in a world right now that's like you drop a truth bomb and walk away. And you feel so awesome. Oh, I dropped a truth bomb on them. Look at them, losers, you know. And <laughs> but you don't see that with Jesus. What you see with Jesus is he always used minimum necessary force. 
And this is something we really need to latch on to here as Christians. Because you may have the full revelation of truth. I doubt you do. <laughs> you can't even figure out your wife, right? So I don't think you have the whole revelation of truth. But, but we walk around and, and, and these Christians, they blast people online. It's like, no, people aren't ready for that a lot of times. And you have to guide people gently like a shepherd does, lead them to a truth. And you know how that, that happens? Through relationship. So this idea of dropping truth, truth bombs, it's kind of immature. Because here's the real thing, too, is like, are you sure you've got the whole truth? Because Paul says every one of us sees through a glass darkly. And so you know what that leads to? It leads to us being in a constant state of humility, saying, I know there's more truth out there than what I'm getting right now. So I'm just going to stay humble, and I'm going to trust the truth's going to reveal more of itself. Yeah. Instead of saying, I've got the definitive truth on so many things. And don't get me wrong. There are some things that are definitive truth. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. There's no way to get to the Father except through him. But there's a lot of other stuff that we face in our life where, yeah, I mean, think about Jesus. Man, he, he really threw people off. That lady that was caught in adultery, she should have been in big trouble. Instead, he let her off the hook. You're like, Jesus, what are you doing? Revelation of the Holy Spirit from him, for him in that moment was, this woman, what she doesn't need is condemnation. What she needs is unconditional love. And that's why Jesus got in a lot of trouble, because the religious formula-seeking people, they were like, you're breaking the formula, bro. She deserves to die. And I don't bring up where the guy was she was with. Like, it takes two to tango. But... That's what got Jesus in trouble because he realized you need revelation of what to do in this situation. And as soon as Jesus came to earth, the question no longer came be like, the, the, the question turned to this. What does love require of me in this situation? Yeah. And that's really tricky, y'all. Because sometimes your son is doing something stupid and you go, well, I just, you know, I just, I'm going I'm to protect him. And maybe love right requires in this situation. If you listen to the Holy Spirit, he says, you need to let your son reap the results of his choices. And hit the wall and maybe end up in prison, whatever it is. And you go, oh, but that's not godly. It is if that's what God's telling you to do in that situation. Because godliness requires listening to the Holy Spirit and relationship. And this is what's hard about it, is sometimes the truth will come to us and it's very uncomfortable what God wants us to do. Which is why most of us look for a formula. Sometimes God will ask you to do stuff that you go, that doesn't seem, that's kind of counterintuitive. That doesn't make sense. But listen to me. I don't care how long you've been walking with the Lord. You may have just committed your life to Jesus last night in a drunken stupor. If you have given your life to Jesus, you have the ability to hear from the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, it takes some learning to really kind of learn how that works. So we're going to talk about the 3.5 ways he talks. But I want to, there, there's, this, there's this quote. There's a guy named Frederick Nietzsche. We don't quote him much in church. In fact, most Christians don't like him. But he said something that's pretty profound. He said this. He said, the strength of a person's care, a spirit would be measured by how much truth he could tolerate, or more precisely, to what extent he needs to have it diluted, disguised, sweetened, muted, or falsified. And our strength comes the more we can handle the full truth of who God, what God says about us, the conviction that he puts in our heart about things we shouldn't be doing, but it takes strength to handle the truth. And a lot of people think they're so strong right now, but really what they're strong about is they're actually living under lies. And we have to be willing at any point to go, what if what I'm getting isn't the full truth? And we have to take truth anywhere we can get it, even if it's partial truth, because oftentimes partial truth will lead to full truth. I think about Pastor Marcus and his testimony, how somebody from the Jehovah's Witnesses, was it Jehovah's Witnesses? They came and... They were coming to lead him to Christ. The Jehovah's Witnesses are different. They have some different takes on who God is. But uh, that truth, he, they showed the Bible to him, and all of a sudden the Bible just opened Marcus's eyes. People were like, well, he couldn't have been led to Jesus by the Jehovah's Witnesses. I would say he was. <laughs> that truth, the truth, you'll know the truth, and if you really know the truth and are open to it, it will set you free. But you've got to show your strength by being willing to be open to any truth, even if it makes you really uncomfortable, because it's like an onion that you're peeling away when you cut through it. It's like, <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. And then your eyes get a little used to it, and then you cut a little more, and it's like, 
Oh, it, the truth is powerful. You've got to be willing to take the truth no matter how much it hurts. And the Holy Spirit will guide you in that truth. When I take out, I, I'm a, I take people on outdoor adventures, you guys know that. Whenever I take a team to somewhere like the Inca Trail, I always make sure I have 3.5 guides. Like, 0.5, what? I always have a guide up front because usually what I've found is a group separated into about three groups. I used to try and keep groups together. It don't happen. You always have three or four overachievers. They're running way ahead. They're a mile ahead of everybody else. And Renee's shaking her head. She knows she hiked with me. She's, yeah. And then you have a group in the middle. That's kind of like a, the social group. Yeah, they all like to hang out. And then you have the group in the back, and that's I usually hang out in the back, right? So there's three, there's three. I have a guy that takes the front group, the overachievers, then I have a guy that stays in the middle, and then I have somebody that takes up the, the back, and then I'm the point five uh, because I kind of just bump between each group. And I, I think that God's guides us in in kind of 3.5 ways like that. So I want to talk to you real quick about how God guides us. The first one he always guides us through is the word of God. Like he will never, ever, ever, ever contradict something that's in the Bible. Like if you feel like you're hearing something from the Lord, you need to filter it through the Bible. And and you may not know the Bible totally yet, so that's why it's really important for this next one I'm going to share with you. Um, First of all, get in your Bible because you'll never find anything that contradicts his word. Uh, th- this, I love this word, 2 Timothy. Paul wrote to Timothy and he said this, all scripture is God-breathed. Like it's straight from the mouth of God. And it's useful for teaching, for rebuking. Rebuking means to correct someone. And, and sometimes you've got to use the word and somebody's like doing something. You're like, hey, actually, that's not what God would say because here's what the word says about it. Correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, that's all of us, may be Thoroughly, that means completely equipped for every good work. The gold standard is always going to be the Bible, the Word of God. You say, why are people so hung up on the Word of God? Well, we're hung up on the Word of God because we believe that it is the framework for how to live in harmony with the seen and the unseen realities of your existence. Both are, it's all right there. And it's a big book. It's actually a bunch of books. The Bible is a series of 66 different books, and you need to get to know those books. But oftentimes there's like, the Bible's big, right? And there's stuff in there. I still, Marcus, man, he'll pull out obscure verses. Sometimes I'm like, where did that come from? And it's in there. And I'm like, man, I never saw that verse before. And he points it out to me. It's such, I mean, I've been reading the Bible for 40, well, 44 years now, 41 years. I didn't start when I was, yeah, anyway. And I'm still learning stuff that's in there because it unfolds. The truth unfolds. And the really crazy thing is you'll read something in the Bible that you've read a hundred times before, and all of a sudden it'll hit you and you go, oh, that, I never saw that in there. That perfectly applies to the situation with my husband, whatever it is. Submit. All right, I'm just kidding. That, That verse about submitting? Anyway. The second way he speaks, and this is a hierarchy, okay? So the top is always going to be the Bible. The second is people, and this is where people are so important because you may not understand and know all of the Bible. This is why it's important to have spiritual people in your life, like spiritual authorities who have been doing this for a long time, who have walked in this for a long time, because you just, there's stuff you just don't know. You just don't know what you don't know. There's a verse here that says, where there's no guidance, a people falls, but in the abundance of counselors, there is safety. I have taken this verse to heart my whole life. And I've got a group of advisors I go to over and over and over again. I don't hardly do anything without running things past them because I want to make sure there may be something I don't see. Before I, sometimes I'll have a scathing letter I want to write to somebody and I'll run it past a group of advisors. I'll never forget, I wrote this letter to one guy and I thought it was brilliant. My dad wrote back, he's like, are you serious? I was like, (laughs) yeah, he's like, you need to throw this letter away. And thank God I did because I completely misunderstood what this guy had said. And I was writing this scathing, like brutal, vicious letter back to him. And I, I was about to drop the truth bomb and walk away. But man, it would have destroyed the relationship. And that's, again, that minimum necessary force. Like you may win the battle, but you've lost the war because people who have been destroyed by you don't usually like hanging around with you anymore. People are so important. And, and oftentimes, most of the time, it's people who have shown themselves trustworthy in their life. There's a proverb that says, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. You, got, you know you got a really good friend on your hand when they're willing to tell you stuff you don't want to hear. Yeah. Like, oh, that made me mad. I can't tell you how many times David has told me stuff. Just, just in the car the other day, he said something. I'm like, oh, I don't like that. He's like, I know you don't like that, but it's what you need to hear. And I was like, 
People are a gift. But you need to make sure that you're hanging around with people who have insight and wisdom. If, if you've heard this said, if, if you know, you're the average of the five people you hang out with most. Most of us think we're smarter than our friends. But you're not. You're right in the middle. If you're the smartest guy in the room, you need to find a new room. And it feels good to be the smartest guy in the room, but you're actually probably not the smartest guy in the room, which is why it takes a little humility to recognize, man, there's probably some stuff I'm not getting. And, and listen, this is the important thing. It's the stuff you don't know that's more important than what you do know, because the stuff you don't know will kill you. You need to pay attention to stuff you don't know, but the only way you can do that is by getting around people who do know stuff. Third way he speaks is through the inner voice. Now, this is a... This is a dangerous one, and this is why it's third in the order. First, you've always got to run it through the Bible. Then you need to run it through people, if you hear like the Lord saying something. But there is this reality that this, this, it says, if this says, the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Now, I'm going to go through this really quick. I've written a whole book where I talk about this, but I'm going to go through this really quick. What this is saying is, like, just like God has three parts, we as humans have three parts to us. We're made of a body. We're made of a soul, which is our thoughts, desires, and emotions. And at the core is the spirit. And when we accept Christ, it says God's spirit actually comes and lives in our spirit. And the challenge then at that point is, are you going to listen to your body and all of its desires? Or are you going to listen to your thoughts, desires, and emotions? Or are you going to listen to the spirit of God? And the goal is to flow from the inside out, where the spirit is impacting your thoughts your desires and your emotions, and then in your body responds properly. But most of the time we just respond to, oh, I woke up today, I have a headache, and it's not sunny, and the allergies, and oh, no, God must have fallen off the throne. <laughs> no. No, that's a lie, right? The Spirit is going to speak truth to you in those moments, and I don't understand how it all works, but the Spirit is living in you. But this is the really challenging part. We're in a world that says, follow your heart, man, it'll never lead you astray. And I've met some people that are in really bad problems because they followed their heart. Jeremiah, uh, he says this, not our, not our pastor here, but uh, the, the original Jeremiah. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? So this is the weird paradox. This is the confusing thing about it. Is the, the, the Spirit of God lives in you, and He will speak to you. But you've got to be really careful because your heart can also lead you astray. Which is why it's so important in that hierarchy, the order, to first of all say, you know, like, well, God must have fallen off the throne. I've got allergies. Mm. The Bible says, no, he didn't fall off the throne. He's still ruling and reigning. You're going to be all right. I've always told you guys on Mondays, Mondays are a hard day for me. I've poured out a lot of energy here. And every, every Monday, Emily, and I'm ready to quit. And Emily is the voice in my life. And she's like, Joel, don't listen to yourself on Monday. You're out of your mind. You're tired. You're exhausted. I mean, I always, every Monday, I want to go start a taco truck and throw out ministry, and I'm just going to, yeah. And Emily, she's like, just don't listen to yourself on Monday. She's a person in my life that I'm thankful for, right? Because that inner voice is lying to me, and I have to say, what's the actual truth of the situation? And the 3.5, this is the final one, is circumstances. And I say this because sometimes God will speak through circumstances that are like everything, just the door's blowing open, and other times he won't. Sometimes you'll have to act in spite of circumstances. There's a story where Paul, it says, it says, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. It's, it's saying, basically, they tried and they tried to get into Asia, but it was just circumstances didn't allow it. And they said, okay, it looks like circumstances are saying, God's saying, we're not supposed to go to Asia right now. That's cool. That's Paul, right? And sometimes you're pushing for something in your life right now, and you're like, I've just got it. If I, can just, you know, if I can just do this. And God's like, the reason I keep blocking you is you're going to mess it up if you go there right now. And oftentimes he'll speak through circumstances. Now, this one's a point five because sometimes he'll also tell you to act in spite of what seem like optimal circumstances. He'll say, I need you to push through on this one because I got something on the other side for you. So it's tricky. But when you've got all these lined up, it's like when you take a rifle and you line up the sights on it you got the dot over here, the dot over here, and the dot in the middle, there's a very good chance you're going to hear the voice of the Lord and what he's saying. And I'm going to be honest with you. 
I've never had more than about 60% certainty on anything I felt like the Lord was saying to me. But I've learned 60% is enough, and I just take the leap, and I trust that He's big enough to bail me out if I'm being stupid. And some people are like, well, I don't act until I'm 100% certain. I'm like, Psh, well, you don't do anything. Nothing's certain. But you can be certain of this. God wants to speak to you. And when you've got all those lined up, it's like a target. And you're like, Lord, is that you? What do I do about this situation? Line all those things up, and he'll give you direction. And, and it's going to still require some faith. You're going to maybe get 60%. If you get 80% clarity, I'll be super jealous. But usually at about 60% clarity, Emily and I have decided we got to trust that this is the Lord's guidance. The Bible lines up. People in our life, authorities have spoken and agreed with us on it. And uh, everything... Uh, the, we feel it deep within us. It's that peace that passes all understanding that guards your hearts and mind. There's like, I shouldn't feel peace, but I feel peace, so I'm moving forward. When all those line up, you can be confident that God is guiding you in the season you're in right now. So my encouragement to you is whatever you're facing right now, man, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Stop trying to figure it out on your own. Humble yourself and recognize you probably don't have the whole truth. Ask for some advice. Seek the Word of God. I mean, sometimes you got to make snap decisions. But even when you have those snap decisions, if you've got a network of people around you, you can make a quick call. Hey, I'm about to do this. Is this wise? Get those people around you, and I can guarantee you, man, the Lord is going to speak to you. And He's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble and sometimes, and sometimes He'll lead you right into trouble, but it'll be trouble that He's guiding you through to get you somewhere that He needs you to go. But he will speak. And you right now, no matter how long you've been following Christ, the Holy Spirit is available to you and he wants to speak to you right where you are. You guys receive that? Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you that you didn't leave us alone to figure it out and wander through the fog. You left the Holy Spirit. He's our guide in all truth. So I pray for those that are just struggling with all sorts of decisions this morning, things they've got to face. I pray, Lord, that they would just drop to their knees and seek you and your guidance, the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead living within them. If you're here this morning and you do not have your relationship right with Jesus, you already know who you are because as I've been talking, the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you that you need to get that right. I'm going to say a prayer in just a second. If you say this prayer, you mean it in your whole heart. It's not a magic formula, but it's a commitment to say, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm going to turn from my way and I'm going to turn to Jesus' way. If that's you, let's all say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way, we turn to your way. Help us walk in your truth. Amen. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We've got some resources in the back for you. Hey, if you got, you got like 24 more hours left to order this book, if you want to pre-order it on Amazon, it'll be there when you get there. If you don't pre-order it, I'll still let you get a copy, but it won't, won't be till next week. So you guys be blessed. You are dismissed. Have a great week. If you are ever in the Seguin area, Come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.